Had the ERA passed, it would have nullified dozens of arcane state laws limiting women's rights. They would no longer, for example, be subject to subtle mechanisms of wage discrimination that, had, uh, that even persist even today. And symbolically, women would have been recognized, and this is even more important, I think, both as mothers as well as as workers. And the biggest irony of this story is that it was a well-organized, articulate campaign of activist women who engineered the defeat of the ERA. Now, this anti-ERA coalition argued that women already had the freedom they needed. The nasty amendment, they argued, would desex society. It would mandate homosexual marriage and unisex restrooms and combat duty for women in the army. Feminism, they said, would destroy the family. And this is a coalition that represented a minority of Americans. So one of the questions I want to deal with today is how did they manage to defeat the ERA? And the answer, which is very complicated, but I can summarize uh, in a couple of sentences, uh, the most important thing is that they built a, a political coalition of right-wing Democrats and Republicans working in grassroots organizations, state by state, linked intimately to the new Christian right. And they mobilized passionate evangelicals who had deliberately ignored American politics since the 1920s. So these were not people, uh, evangelicals, who had paid any attention to politics um, uh, since the early 20th century.